that's a good thing to know that we do have people that are certified in here. And Delilah, good. But what do we do when we've fallen and we can't get up? Maybe you remember that commercial that was on television years ago. Who remembers the commercial about how I've fallen and I can't get up? With the, you know, the senior adults who had fallen. You know, we don't see her actually fall in the commercial, but when the commercial begins, she is laying on the floor, yes. shouting, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Yes. So, you know, it's a company who is trying to sell us their services. <laughs> the little device that they have that enables you to simply just what? Push, Push a button when you need help. Well, about four years ago, when I worked at a church in Mooresville, <clears throat> and I was a youth minister there at the church, we were uh, out during the summer, of course, the hottest part of July, working at uh, one of our senior adults' homes. Each summer, I uh, organized what we called Camp Mooresville, and Camp Mooresville was a camp where the youth came in and spent like a weekend together, or a Thursday, Friday, Saturday together, and did fun stuff together, but during the day, the <clears throat> morning time, and part of the evening, we went out to the community and did repair work around folks' homes. And so, this one day, I took the youth out to uh, a lady's name. Um, her name was uh, Miss Willie. And Miss Willie was in her early 90s, and we just needed to do a little yard work at her house. And <clears throat> we really didn't need to do any yard work, but, you know, that's okay. That's not the story. But... Miss Willie just needed us to come out there and hang out a little bit and just spend time with her. Well, as we were out there doing some yard work, <clears throat> we see Miss Willie coming down her walker. 90 years old, coming out to check in on us and see how we're doing, make sure we were not getting too hot. And she had a little uh, bag beside of her that had water in it. Miss Willie, that's so sweet of you to bring us water. We're so grateful. And then I turned my back. And next thing I know, they're like, Edward! Miss Willie has fallen! She can't get up! Whew, at that moment, I'm like, oh, what, do I, what do I do? What do I do? I was like, I got I cut off my cell phone, and I was panicking everywhere, and I was like calling for another adult, and I was like, can you call 911? But at that moment, I didn't know what to do, and I didn't have my cell phone on me or anything. But Miss Willie was laying right there, over there, <laughs> on the ground, just laying there. And so finally, I was like, oh, I saw this necklace that Miss Willie had around her neck. Yeah. And so, good thing I remember from my commercial, yeah. Miss Willie has fallen, and she can't get up. So I press the button, and they come on and start talking to me. What is your emergency? Wow, how amazing <laughs> that this company that I got to see on TV, this thing is actually going into action. Amen. Well, praise the Lord for that. So you may remember that commercial, of course. And of course, Miss Willie, you press the button, they got on there, and the ambulance was there in no time. And maybe some of you have one of these. Or maybe you know someone that does have one. But that thing, I think, is called Life Alert or something like that, that they try you know, to sell people, you know, when they have times that someone has fallen and they can't get up. But the bottom line is that when we fall, you know, it's not a joking matter. And there are times in our spiritual walk that we fall and we can't necessarily always get back up right off. And sometimes we fall so hard that we can't get up by ourselves. So as Paul brings this landmark letter in a landing this morning, he says a whole lot of things to us very quickly. The whole letter gets summed up in two main themes that I think. First, we need to do our best to glorify God and how we live and in serving one another in love. And the second thing is there is nothing to boast about except for the cross of Christ alone. It's all grace and after all, it's about gratitude. You can create a good momentum in your life by sowing seeds that come from the Spirit of God. He meant for us to help each other and to bear each other's burdens and to minister to each other. No one worries about his or her own needs. They will be cared for 
by others, even while we ourselves are busy doing the same thing. So friends, if the church is going to be the force for God in this hurting and confused world that we live in, that is called to be the church, it must learn to love people, accept them, and forgive them. So please hear me well when I say that this morning, so that you don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we have to condone sin and a sinful lifestyle. You know, you've heard it said, hate the sin, but love the sinner. And to meet someone where they are. Can I get an amen? Amen. God is in the business of restoration. I'm thankful that he doesn't give up on me. I'm thankful that he doesn't give up on us. <laughs> because we fail. Because we fall. I'm thankful that he doesn't stop loving us Amen. when we're down. I'm thankful that he doesn't condemn us from our failures. But instead seeks to restore us in spite of our failures. He loves us. After all, he is in the restoration business, right? And when you fall, when you fall so low that you can't get up, I'll be there. I'll be there to pick you up and to turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. I'm a God of restoration. I don't know, brothers and sisters, where you may be at today. Maybe you feel like you've fallen so low that you can't get back up by yourself. I want you to understand this this morning. There is no valley low enough, no hog pen deep enough that the grace of God can deliver you from. No problem hard enough, no situation mixed up enough that the grace of God can't free you from. And there's no sickness strong enough. Stop telling God how big your problems are and start telling your problems how big your God is and what He can do. And start saying how much God really can do if you just let Him. Friends, it's time that we stop stressing. God knows what He's doing. Don't be discouraged Amen. by your closed doors. Yes. If God wants a door to open, you can be certain it will be open. And all the forces of darkness can't stop it. Stop fighting with one another and start restoring one another. You know, you might be thinking, well, Pastor Edward, those are some mighty fun words. How exactly do I do that? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness. Considering yourself less, you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens. And by doing so, you fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Yes. But let each one examine what? Yes. His own work. Yes. In other words, what? Mind your business. Yes. But let each one examine his own work. Yes. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone. And not in another. Let those who are spiritual restore the fallen brother or sister. I think many times we don't understand what true spirituality is. It's more than being able to quote scriptures to someone. It's more than looking holier than thou. It's more than speaking in tongues. It's more than financially supporting the church. It's loving folk just where they are. Just as Christ loves them, brothers and sisters. So what makes it so hard? It's picking up and helping that brother or sister who's falling. Yes. The last thing something, someone that falls needs and can't 
get up. What they, you know, don't really need is to have someone pointing a finger at them, judging them in their face. And you know, believe it or not, the last thing that someone who's fallen and needs a little help in getting up needs is another Bible verse stating why they should have never fallen in the first place. You know, I'm going to get a little real right now. And that's okay. I'm only pointing here for a year at a time. So, got to get it. Just kidding. I'm going to be here as long as the bishop allows me to be here. You know, a Bible verse is great, but I think what they really need is an arm and shoulder to cry on. A kind word in their ear saying, you know what, Salome, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because God is with you. I'm with you. I'm here to help you and to support you. I think that that's what the church is all about, being the true, the true disciple, an example yes. of Christ, yes. that just spitting. Well, Psalm 139, 14 says, <laughs> you know you shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you know, I am going to be honest with you. I think that that's what turns folks away sometimes yes. from the church. Yes. When we are repeatedly, repeatedly putting them down. Yes, yes, yes. And not really being nice to them. I mean, I'm guilty as well. You know, the restoration of a fallen brother or sister is always done by helping them to recognize that their trespass was just that. A trespass. And God is always standing by, waiting to hear our repentant cry. Reach out to the fallen with the forgiveness of God. Be ready to extend to them the grace of God. And when you come across someone who's fallen and they can't get up, be the voice of God to them. Be the heart, be the arm, be the shoulder to cry on, to hear. When you come across someone who's fallen, be to them what you would want them to be to you. So what does that mean? And the cross of Christ, I glory. Lift high the cross. May it be forever and ever, amen. That we glory in the cross of Christ and not boast and make it about us. That's something hard that we can struggle with sometimes. And may everything that I say and everything that I do just bring Christ the glory. Because He's what it's all about. I hope that if I were to breathe my last breath this very day, I hope and pray that I lived my life and wait, Jesus Christ wanted me to live it. And that I can be just a representation of Him in my life. And make it all about Him. some help. Yes. I've fallen. Yes. I'm on the way. And I can't get up. Yes. What are you going to do for me? How are you going to be a faithful servant of Jesus Christ? Are you going to glory in the cross of Christ? Or is it going to be about you? I have one more story that I want to close out with this morning. Servants of Christ in a former church that I worked in. Her name was Ruth. Each Sunday, Miss Ruth and her 
late 80s, would come into church, happy as to be still driving herself to church each Sunday. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And at the first church that I served in, that I talked about earlier, I sang with the choir. And each Sunday, this group would look up in the choir and give me a little wave. <laughs> and as we got up to sing the anthem for that Sunday, she'd stick out her tongue. <laughs> and of course, each Sunday after worship, I'd go up to her and say, Miss Ruth, you've got to stop sticking out that tongue. Because I couldn't hold it together sometimes and just laugh. <laughs> Get a little tickled. But then I started noticing that Miss Ruth was missing sometimes at Sunday, and so I always call over to see how she's doing. Edward, I'm just not feeling well this week. Or I just didn't feel like coming to church. Miss Ruth, you know you love coming to church. Well, you know, I'm just not feeling well. So then I began to notice that Miss Ruth's health started declining a little bit. Meanwhile, as well, I started receiving cards from a secret person said, I'm thinking and I'm praying for you, but they never signed it. And each week, there was a little money in there. I'm like, wow, Lord, is this from you from heaven? Or, you know, what's this all about? And then the very last week, I received a card that this person wrote in there, who was from. And it was Miss Ruth. The last week that she was alive, she was still sending me cards with money in it. You know, Miss Ruth never boasted in herself. She never, never complained about anybody. Never even talked bad about the preacher. The only thing that I heard her say was, well, it was a good sermon, but you could have done better. <laughs> but the one thing that I know for sure is that Miss Ruth loved the Lord. Amen. And she lived her life doing what Christ had blessed her with. And it was a blessing to do it for someone else. And she always, always gave thanks to God. And I'll never forget, she said to me, Edward, I just love you. I praise God for you. May you never forget that it was God who created you, and God that loves you, and a God that we'll get to see one day when we leave this earthly place. Friends, that's all about you. No thing to ever compare. No matter how much money you give to the church. No matter if you sing in the choir each Sunday. No matter if you teach Sunday school class. Yes, those things are wonderful and great. But who are you bringing the glory to? Are you living your life? Helping each other bear one another's burdens. And helping someone out when they have fallen and they need some help to get up. Or are you just pointing fingers, whipping out your Bible, and turning to that scripture? Yes, it's great. I promise you it is. But is it turning someone away 
from the kingdom of God. And as we come to the table this morning, as forgiven children of God, we come and boast and feast on the one true King of glory who loves us more than we can ever imagine. More than we can ever fathom or comprehend. You come to the table this morning ready just as you are. Broken. Broken as well. Oh, Lamb of God.